Equipco TV. It's going to be larger than life. Hello friends, Matthew here from Equipco TV. Thanks for joining me today on Matthew's Tech Tips. Uh, today we have Bruno from Fantech. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here, Bruno. Uh, we're going to be going over the Fantech uh, line of uh, fresh air units. We're going to be talking about the history of the company, talking about some installation techniques, how we size them here in Ontario. Um, we have a unit behind us here. We're going to be you know, taking it apart, having a look at it, showing you guys exactly what you need to know when it comes to putting these units together, sizing them, putting them up on the wall. Check this out. So to give you a little bit of history first before I go into the unit on Fantech and, and where, where we're from. So Fantech was actually founded in 1981. Uh, so we've been operating for almost uh, which is over three decades now. Um, we have plants in North America that are one in Buktush, New Brunswick, and the other one which is about a half hour out of Moncton. And then the other one is actually in the US uh, in a town called Lenexa, just outside Kansas City. Um, both places are ISO 9001 certified, they have their own research lab, so all product developments are actually done by us. Uh, so we have a sound lab in Lenexa and a climate lab that goes up to, or goes down to minus 40 in Buktush. Wow, that's fantastic. So, yeah, so uh, that's, that's what's nice, is we have a, a great team of engineers that uh, can come up with some new products. So to give you a little bit, uh, my role with the company is actually the product manager, so um, I'll go through uh, the products that I, I work with, which are the fresh air appliances or HRVs, ERVs, as most people call them. Um, so what's a fresh air appliance? Uh, essentially, it is meant to take the stale air out and replace it with fresh air by preconditioning the air either with a HRV, which is a heat recovery core, or an ERV, which is an energy recovery core. Um, so as you can see with these arrows here, it shows you your air coming out from outside, goes through your core, gets pre-warmed, preconditioned to get distributed through your home. Um, then your air coming from the home, which is warm, uh, will go through your core, heat up the core, and then which preheats the air incoming air, and then it gets exhausted outside. Certain models, uh, you're going to notice that there's a little internal damper. Sometimes if you have a digital control or something like that, you want to recirculate the air and always get that air movement. Mm -hmm. You can hit it to recirc and actually grab that air and recirculate it back into your home. Really? Yeah. That's an interesting feature. Cool. Yeah. Um, so other features with our top ports, uh, we have uh, balancing on your collars. So you can balance your supply and then you can balance your exhaust. Um, Fairly simple to do. And we're doing that through these test ports up here on the top of the unit, right? Yeah, right on the collar. Come in here, Cam, we gotta check this out. So these are the test ports on the top. So these are our two exhaust collars here. You see, this is where your manometer attaches, it's on these two ports. And then, Bruno, I believe I have a screwdriver over there. Yeah. So have a look down at the top here. So this little damper part right here, this is how we're gonna be adjusting that. So see how that moves a little bit? So this, this guy here is wide open. And then as we turn that, see how that just kind of closes it down? That's how you do a balance on these units. It's just that simple, just that quick and easy. Once you get your manometer on there, the chart's on the door of the unit. Actually, Bruno's got it right there. So there's the pressures that you're looking for. And that's exactly how you balance an HRV. It's a lot simpler than people think. People uh, uh, tend to overthink balancing an HRV quite, like almost every time. If it really, if you're doing an HRV install, first and foremost, they plug in. Bruno, you want to show them the bracket there? Most of our top port models will come with a mounting bracket. So what's nice is that screw it to your wall, find some studs, and then hang your unit. Then all you have to do is do your duct connections, plug it in, or you do your wiring connections, then you plug in. So really, when you're hanging these things up, if it's, I'll give you an hour. If you do it in 60 minutes, great, I'm super thrilled for you. If it's taking you an extremely long time, something's gonna miss and you're kind of overthinking something. Keep that in mind. It should be a pretty straight, simple, quick, and easy installation for the most part. 
So let's go a little bit into the unit itself. <clears throat> so once you've got your unit running, um, really easy, you get two filters that keep the core clean. Uh, filters are just a electrostatic filter, um, almost a MERV-1 filter. Um, they're washable, reusable. If you wash them often, you can use these for quite some time, so you can, a few years even. Uh, so the recommended period to wash these is about every three, three to six months. Um, and about once a year, you take your core out and then you soak it in water, um, rinse it off, let it dry, and then you put it back in. So it's really simple to work. But as you can see on the inside here, um, actually the, the, the terminals are missing, but uh, you would have some quick connects here. So you fish your wire in here, your wire comes down, and then you would do your wiring terminal, and then it just plugs right back in. Awesome. Yeah. So as you guys uh, see there with our missing terminals, this is a traveling unit. Um, so sometimes things get a little damaged and dented and we show this off to a lot of people So our apologies for that, but you can easily see these on the uh, spec sheets or anything like that And if you've ever hooked up anything with quick connects, it's exactly the same just plug in the wires and away you go It's fairly simple So the unit itself with regards to the cleaning installation looks pretty straightforward and simple You get the core, you get the filters. I get asked them all the time about these oval collars up here on the top some people just tin tape it right to the uh, flexible line. Some people use zip ties. What is the best way to attach your, uh, your, your lines to these units? So we always recommend using a little bit of flex duct just to uh, compensate for any vibrations or anything like that. Not that our units vibrate, but if, if you're getting a lot of airflow and sometimes that ductwork is not installed properly, you mm -hmm. might get that ductwork vibrating against the airflow going through. Okay. So we, off, we always say use about six inches to 12 inches of flexible duct just to make sure that you get that flexilation. Um, straightforward, you can use round duct, squeeze it together and then it fits into our oval ports. Uh, I do want to mention our top ports are all oval ports but we do have side port units that are round ports. So those uh, side port units is sim similar unit, instead of having your ports on top, you are mounted on the side. Gotcha. Yeah. And the other question I get asked very frequently is your exhaust and your intake, which ones do we need to insulate as far as our lines? Your cold side. Your cold side. Always your cold side. So anything from outside or to outside would have to be insulated though. Gotcha. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So now we kind of got that, uh, there's the basics of the unit. Yeah. What are the different types of installs that uh, one might want to entertain putting in a uh, fresh air unit? So in the market, there's three types of insulation. There's the simplified install, which is connecting, connecting your unit directly to a return, uh, the, the return of the duct uh, furnace. Um, that mounts fairly six feet apart. Uh, you run your uh, exhaust air from the building on, on the return, and then six feet later, you would supply the air back in. So really simplified install. Uh, your other installation, which would be a partially dedicated system where you do have a furnace or a heat pump in your home, and the same type of duct work, but you're uh, gonna be pulling, instead of pulling it from the ductwork, you're actually gonna go straight to the source and pull from the kitchen and the bathrooms. So you're getting that exhaust there and that staler out, and then you would supply it through the system itself. Now, for say you're doing electric heat and you don't have a furnace or a heat pump in your home, there's no ductwork, uh, then you have your fully dedicated system that will bring the air directly to the source. So you get the fresh air into your bedrooms, the living rooms, and your staler is getting pulled out again from the bathrooms and the kitchen. Okay, I got that, fantastic. That makes a lot of sense to me. So basically what you're saying is if you have ductwork, you got a couple options that you can work with. Yep. Um, if you don't have ductwork, say if you have a radiant heating system or something like that, or as you mentioned, electric, um, then you need to fully duct the system and bring your fresh air into the uh, existing ports um, to their own dedicated runs. Yep. Got it, okay. All right, well, one last question I kind of get asked fairly regularly. How do we size these things? What is the most uh, common uh, mistake or what's the most thing that people should really know when it comes to putting these sizes together? Well, the first thing I'm gonna say is always check your local building codes. Uh, here in Ontario, I think it's the OBC 2012 version. So you wanna make sure that you're sizing it a proper, according to the, the, the national or the uh, provincial codes or to your local codes of whatever you have. Um, the, but the standard uh, that I've seen the most is your total ventilation capacity is being calculated. And when I say total ventilation capacity, that is when you calculate all your, bed, your room count. 
So for mm -hmm. say, you get your master bedroom that's 20 CFM, all the other bedrooms are 10, and you get your living room that are 20 CFM, and then uh, some other rooms will be 10 CFM. So then you calculate all the rooms in your home, it gives you a total ventilation rate, uh, which would be you running your unit on a normal speed. Um, so it varies sometimes, you get 100 CFM. If you had less, uh, we do have some smaller units, but you can even go up to 200 or even more. Gotcha. So, um, our product range in our HRVs and ERVs, uh, first share appliances, you're looking at anything from a small 70 CFM unit, which is, I'd say, 11 inches in depth, to a 2800 CFM commercial unit. Wow. Uh, so in the residential, uh, we stop at around 400 CFM. Uh, we have a small, like, commercial living use for residential, so 450 CFM. Um, but the, I rarely see that be installed in your home. That would take yeah, quite the monster home to put that guy in, right? Yeah. And so, also, you mentioned here that you do with commercial units. Like, from what I understand, the fresh air units, the HRVs, and the ERVs, that's just one section of it. Like, you also do radon fans, inline fans, everything like that through Fantech? Yeah, so Fantech has over 115 product families in their product group. That's fantastic. Um, so we do inline fans for dryer boosters, bathroom ventilation, uh, kitchen exhaust ventilation, uh, radon fans like you mentioned, um, anything uh, garage ventilation, um, anything that moves air, Fantex takes care of it. <laughs> fantastic. Okay, I get you there. Well, as you, uh, as you saw, the unit is fairly straightforward, simple to install, or at least it should be. If it's not, give us a call. We'll help you with uh, any problems that you're having. If it's moving air, Fantech does it. HRVs, ERVs, inline fans, radon fans, commercial, light commercial, whatever you need, Fantech's gonna have, uh, gonna have a solution for you. Bruno, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Equipco TV.